Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Andy Kindler's Thought Spiral <laughs> <laughs> with your host, Andy Kindler, and Mr. Fix-It, J. Elvis Weinstein. Hi, everybody. It's good to be here. It's a Sunday night, special edition. That's right, it's a Sunday Andy night. Andy has a certain sense of doom about him mm-hmm. as he prepares to go off to Montreal tomorrow. I've already today, I listened to Mark Maurer on his show. He had Letterman on. That was great. Listen, I'm a fan of Letterman, and I enjoyed the interview. Yeah, I, I, I heard that as well. And Mark Maron sometimes would say that he, he would get himself sick. Yeah. And I know the exact same feeling, because I've already gone through two scenarios where I have a, a sore throat. Yeah, you always do this, though. I always do that. You always do this. And when I'm always, drinking, there's always some potential catastrophe, and you're drinking some very. It's hard to tell what color it is because of the color of the thing. Well, what but it happen- actually looks like it's a liquid in black and white. Yes, <laughs> this is the newest way that I'm doing my iron infusions. Ah, and I don't want to tell you. People say, "How do they taste when you drink like that?" I don't know. I haven't tasted it in a while. I'm rusty at drinking them. I'm rusty at drinking them. It's like licking an anvil. <laughs> I Susan got one of these new things. I, she's not. We're not getting money for it. Smoothie, smoothie-matic kind of thing. It's like unbelievable. This is the real deal. We had a thing. I think it was 100 years old that we were using. Yeah. And it had like a yellow, you know, like a one of those it wasn't blenders. Rough. You were trying to make smoothies in it, and it was making roughies. <laughs> Well, I gave Susan one of those magic wand things. <laughs> you know, magic, like a magic. It's, it's not really that magic. But like an, take, an immersion blender? Yeah, it's exactly what it was. And that, after a while, is not all. And first of all, it's not cracked up to be anything. Why do I sound. Okay, I sound <laughs> like I have an appliance in my mouth, which I do. I now have a, 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 par, a, a partial in my mouth. Oh, okay, that's good. Yeah, but I need to wear it, and I'm afraid it'll affect my speech now. Yeah, it is. It is? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> That's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. Do you think I shouldn't wear a, oh, no one cares? Is it removable? It is. I'm not taking it out now, though. Not now, but for the speech? For the speech, I probably <laughs> will. <Okay. laughs> I had no idea that this was happening. Maybe I'll be used to it by then. Maybe. How could this affect my speech? It's a bite plate type of a deal. I don't know. You've got a little bit of a, a, a godfather thing going on. I, you know, I tell you. Say to Taglia. <laughs> to Taglia. Yeah. He don't call me. He don't call me. But you come to me, and you ask me for this and that and the other thing. But you don't call me. Can you get me some uh, Kleenex that I can wad in my mouth? That's the only way I can do a good, effective Godfather. Yeah, we'll do that at the break. It used to be my we'll, only. We'll get you loaded up with your kit. <laughs> you see, my only impression. <laughs> hey, you come to me. Did you ever see this movie? I don't remember the name of the movie, but at the end of the movie, one of the guys is very upset. He's, I don't know, the star of the movie. Okay. And he's like, you goddamn did it, didn't you, you damn, damn, damn monkeys? <laughs> uh, you, don't, don't, you don't know what movie that is? No. Ah. He, goes, he goes, let me give you some more clues. Okay. He goes, those goddamn monkey, the Statue of Liberty now. Oh, great. <laughs> That's all I needed. I never got a chance to go up it. <laughs> now it's on the shores. What's happened? This is the worst dream I've ever had. Oh, God, you goddamn monkeys. <laughs> Does he yell, you goddamn monkeys? At the end? Something like that, yeah. <laughs> That's from the movie Enough with the Apes. Enough with the Apes. <laughs> you wrote a joke for me for the, the speech. I'm going up for the speech tomorrow. Yeah. And I'm very, I'm very proud of myself yeah. for not freaking out four times a day. That's good. Yeah, so that's what I'm going for. I'm not working. I'm sure. I'm sure um, Susan hears nothing but tick, 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 tick happening for her. But <laughs> <laughs> well, she asked me. I'm getting very, very mature for someone who's a whining baby. Yeah. Because I was making these sounds. Huh? <laughs> oh. Oh. And then what's wrong? I said. I mean, I can't tell you because it's just, an, it's first of all, that's what the podcast is for, to bore people to <laughs> tears with what's the matter with me. Let me save it for a couple of hours, sweetie. I said, I'm going through some things, but I don't want to talk about them because it only makes it worse. And uh, 
That seems to have helped her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. <laughs> no, no. It's, it's better because it's the same thing. I have a hang of hang of, I can't get that. So get, what get, you're get, saying get. is I'm the victim. <laughs> well, that's the way I've run my whole life. Okay. Oh, you no, mean you, I am uh, the victim. Why are you the victim? Because you are not talking about it with her and saving it for me. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, no, no. I already made that. Is it? That would be what you would think. Yeah. Because it, it would be normal to think that. Right. All I can think now is that you want me to remove my appliance. I don't. It's close enough to you. Is it better now? <laughs> Hi, 65 degrees downtown. Why do I feel like it would only be good if I could do my uh, DJ voice? Do you think Frank Gorshin had this kind of problem? <laughs> <laughs> he had all sorts of problems, but he I don't did think not dental really. appliances. He was the Riddler. Yes, he was. But what was so scary <laughs> about that? Hey, Batman, riddle me this. I put some dynamite in your underwear. <laughs> hey, hey, diddle, diddle, cats in the fiddle. Is it, was, was, is that something like that? I'm sure he feels great that his long career was boiled down to four guest spots. <laughs> No, Frank Gorshin, I know him separately from Ed Sullivan. Yeah. But I don't know that. I mean, I'm not a Frank Gorshin expert. No, I would say most people who's who have a, you know, a peripheral knowledge of Frank Gorshin, that's all they're going to know. That's true. That's all that survived, really. Well, that makes it makes me sad for when I go. You know, like right now if I go, yeah. Who cares? Seriously, beyond my wife. And believe me, I give care. her a couple of okay, days. Okay, I care. Fine. There. Do you want give, me to? Do you want me? Give both of you. Do you want me to sign an affidavit? Yeah, but let me. But would you? How long would you be sad for? I can't tell you. <laughs> are, you are you daring me to die first? <laughs> well, I'm hoping, kind of. What? Late, late in the game. Late. <laughs> late I the better game. die. That's the one thing that you should not have befriended me. Are you gonna? Oh, of course. Everybody has a friend like you have. I th I'm ready. I have dogs. <laughs> <laughs> but you can also say. Yeah, Andy's not doing so well. And that's like a thing to talk about, how your old friend Andy. Right. Well, what is he? He's got to be uh, pushing uh, 63. You know, some of he has good days and bad, is what I expect <laughs> I was saying. It was just Sometimes like you go out there to visit him and he doesn't know who you are. <laughs> sometimes you can tell he's doing shtick from the 80s. But sometimes he's sharp. This is he's really, sharp. this is not as much fun as I thought it would be to hear. Well, Letterman used to do that joke that I loved every time he did it, where he went, he smiled a little bit, he sat up. I don't even know where he got it from. Yeah. He had a piece of cake. He tried, he had, took a piece of cake. It's about a guy who was basically on his deathbed. Yeah, celebrating a birthday. Yeah, or something. He <laughs> smiled, he tried to have a little cake. That's what, I don't want that. Okay. I'm very similar to Letterman. I'll smother you, fine. I am very similar to Letterman, except for the success. Ba ba bum, I make fun. I make fun of what I haven't done. <laughs> you can't say I didn't accomplish it for lack of trying. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You spent years. That's exactly why you didn't. <laughs> you spent years worrying about what the guy 10 minutes ago on the street, what he was thinking when he didn't say, Boy, Andy, you're looking good today. <laughs> no regrets is what I've always... I, I want, always wanted to have a career that you could say at the end, no regrets. Just yeah. didn't work out that way. Not my fault. <laughs> right. That's my biggest regret. <laughs> but luckily, I take solace from those uh, financial planner commercials. The green room ones? The one, you know, it's the guy and he's talking to his... Yeah, it's the Ameritrade green room. Why do they call it green room? Because it's always green. <laughs> <laughs> He guys say, "What if I don't want to? What if I don't want to retire?" I well, we can make plans for that. We don't have to retire. We can just call it putting you out to pasture. Why does that guy get punched? That guy, I never get punched, and I should. No, I'm not saying for real. Don't punch that guy. But I it, made fun of him on Twitter once, and Christopher Moore was like, "Yeah, I know him. He's a really nice guy," and he like tagged it. <laughs> I was like, "Oh man, now I feel like Andy." <laughs> Who's Christopher Moore? Christopher Moore is an author uh, that I like a lot. That yeah, but I wouldn't like him so much, Josh. The man won't let you <laughs> relax for a minute. How are you going to relax <laughs> if you can't make fun of the? Well, you should. Here's what I would have said to him. Oh, you know that guy? Can you can you tell him? Can you send him a message for me? He say, "Look, I'm sure you're a wonderful actor, 
these are the worst things that have ever been done. You should stop doing it now. Because I did say I, I am able to separate the role from the person. <laughs> 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 I think it's odd that somebody would write that to you. How ca- also, that Christopher Moore... He's someone who I interact with. It wasn't... Uh, that's true. It wasn't purely out of the blue. That Otherwise, he, you would have gone... a shot across my bow. <laughs> <laughs> I would say... If you said to that, if you said, if he said to you, I mean, he's a friend of mine, I go, well, then you know how horrible they are, right? Does he have, do you ever have to talk him down from him? What? Okay. That's where we part ways. Why? Because you think. Because <laughs> I didn't want to at that point. No, you don't want to. Now the guy's been tagged. He's tagged. <laughs> is his name isn't Christopher Moore, is he? When you got to his webpage, uh, the guy does the voice. What does it say there? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I made. <laughs> Is that my laugh? That was that. I time. have. I just found out I have cancer today. Really? It's not, <laughs> it's not funny. It, my father died of it too from from laughing the laugh track. Cancer. Of the funny bone. Yeah. Now you happy? Yeah. I'm laughing this way because I have a hole. I'm in my happier brain. than if you didn't have a funny cancer. What's the funniest cancer, ladies and gentlemen? I like. Okay, cut that whole thing out. Everything until now. Okay. Hey. Well, great to be here. I am going to Montreal tomorrow, Josh. That's fantastic. I, you must feel great and prepared. Oh, guess. Oh, is it not time to show and tell yet? No. I don't know. What's I, your I watched. I listened. I didn't watch it, but I listened to Chunks, which I enjoyed very much. Am I burying the lead? No, sure. Now we're on my favorite topic. <laughs> well, I want to say I thought it was great. Well, thank and you. And I enjoyed it. I liked the way it was recorded. And uh, you added things to bits I heard before that I didn't, or maybe I hadn't heard. You know, I don't n- normally listen when you're talking, <laughs> but you <laughs> add a lot of that stuff. You add more stuff to it. I can't remember. I could probably go. No need for. Specific. You want me to go joke by joke? No. Or chunk by chunk. And the other thing that I thought was the reason why it's uh, that calling it chunks is great, and and the, and then when you listen to it as chunks, it actually makes you want to listen to it more. And I'll tell you why. Why, Andy? <laughs> because your thing is... I think it's weird you brought a ventriloquist puppet today, by the way. Why? <laughs> Shut up! I hate that you... Here's my new ventriloquist. Are you ready? My, my new puppet? Sure. You ready? His, his name is... Uh, his name is... Uh, it's Hitler. You're Hitler. just doing anything not to I say hate Hitler. The Jews. <laughs> I hate the Jews. The Jews suck. Fuck the Jews. The Jews are responsible for them. <laughs> Come on, now, why, why are you saying that, Mengele? It's Adolf the dead Nazi. <laughs> this is making me laugh, but not in the way that I know others will enjoy it. Right. And that's, you know, so many of these podcasts, I don't know if you listen to them, they're like entertaining for the people who are listening. Mm-hmm. We do something different here. Exactly. If you don't like what we're talking about, well, I don't want them to stop listening. It's formed in, it's recorded in alienation surround. <laughs> So back to me mm-hmm. and my album that you enjoyed so much. Yes. The reason why I thought it was called Chunks is because you have your own style. Well, we neither one of us ramp up, ramp up to a big close, <laughs> right? I should. I, I tried, actually. But well, that- <laughs> I guess I didn't do it. Well, oh, well. Hmm. But what I'm saying is. You have uh, your delivery is conversational. That's the way you deliver yes. it. Now, maybe I could ramp up a show by getting more and more. Oh, I'm crazy now. I'm crazy steam of consciousness. But your thing is a delightful walk down humor lane. <laughs> and when you, when you hear that it's chunks and you know, oh, it's not going to be folks, strap yourself in. I'm going to tell you the story about why this album was made. And then people go, oh, my God. The right away I'm going, they're chunks. I'm not trying to listen for a, 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 a meaning, like an over. And it, I thought it was made a lot, a lot more entertaining. I mean, I thought it wasn't entertaining. But I, I think it's like the actual name added to the experience. Well, good. I like to be holistic. And that is true. I don't know what that word means. But I do, really. I also thought it sounded good. It sounded very good. Yeah, I thought they recorded it well. And the only thing I noticed was, <laughs> from having been to Minneapolis, I noticed, like, the, from the, that woman's reaction to, I forgot what she was reacting to, maybe your 
kidney maybe there yeah. were some reactions that really reminded me of Minneapolis yeah. where they are almost on the edge of oh, that's so please don't yes. I mean I didn't even know you had this can we step down for right. a while no I have to sneak a lot of stuff by them before they realize how dark it was retroactively <laughs> so, so that I thought was cool because it actually conveyed having just been there it conveyed the feeling of the room yeah and the feeling of when people are polite and and so I don't know I, I thought it was, it was made, that made me laugh for my own reasons yeah so uh, I say uh, I give you four schmazuzzes that's my new thing yeah four schmazuzzes out of four oh beautiful what, was it, is five more considered <laughs> I don't know five schmazuzzes I just wanted to know where I stood you know what a schmazuzza is. Um, it's a made-up word by Andy Kindler from it's, the uh, Yiddish Fun Factory. <laughs> <laughs> Have you read my book? Fun for Yiddish. Yiddish is fun. <laughs> Why would I write that? I don't, I don't know, know any goddamn Yiddish. <laughs> I did hear something that my uh, Gunisht Elfin. I was like, uh, my dad used to say that. Yeah. Gunisht Elfin means beyond hope. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> So, anyway, I would like to... Sounds re- Yiddish. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to recommend to everybody that they buy uh, Chunks. Now, here's the thing that's interesting. Do you think... And you don't have to buy it if you if you don't want to. It's streaming on all of the streaming services as well. Okay, so. here's the thing I don't understand. Do you remember that story, or you don't remember the story, because it was complete, Was the story completely eliminated that I suspected would be completely eliminated? I don't know. It was a long... Oh, about, your, about, about your pizza? About no, DoorDash. No, no, it's still there. Because <laughs> it took up such a substantial amount of time that I couldn't just lift it out. You know what? Then I'm going, then having it been such a huge success and people talking about it, I will, I will add another one of my, the, the good news is this anecdote is probably 15 seconds long. Okay, good. I tried to down, I, I bought your album today for nine ninety nine. Thank you. Did they, do they tell you immediately or does it come later? Do you don't get an instant notification? I think it just shows up in your iTunes. No, you. I mean, does it say, oh, nice no, job? Oh, no, it didn't. They didn't, didn't go, hey, my, Andy got one, finally. Did. <laughs> hey, did you get my money? So it took me 20 minutes to a half hour to figure out, not that long, but because they don't want me to buy it. No, they want you to join Apple Music. That's exactly that's what, what they want. I've gotten lots of complaints about that from people. So you actually have to... As if I controlled it. <laughs> the worst example that I ever did with that was I was so addicted to Mark Marin's podcast that I tweeted to him, I'm having trouble, I can't get it going. It was some stupid thing like two years ago, you know. Two I mean, years ago? This was, was three tweeted. years ago where <laughs> turn off your computer and turn it on. Yeah, it's like, I can't get your shows. Has anybody else mentioned they can't get your shows? So, uh, yes. And then it made me ma- angry at myself and angry at Apple. Yeah. Why, why was I angry at myself? Because it feels like I'm stupid. It feels like having one of those services sounds like the only way to go. But then the other part of me says, I want to buy the things I want to buy. I don't want to... Do I own your album now? Yes. Yeah. So the other way, it's like they could change Apple Music. You know, I know I could have gotten it... it for, first of all, how much does it cost? What, Apple Music? What is it? Is it five bucks a month or it's something? It's like 10 a month, I think. That's a lot. It's a lot, but it just gives you all the music. You have it. I know you have no, it. No, I don't. I have, I have, we have Amazon Music, though. So I did the other day get to go, hey, Alexa, play Chunks by Javis Weinstein. I didn't actually listen to it, but I wanted to see if it worked, and it did. That's a sad day. You know what I say? No, if I listened to it, it would have been a sad day. No, I don't. I think the whole story is depressing. (laughs) Hey, you know, it would be, I mean, do you think like someone like me has ever Googled their name more than 40 times a minute? (laughs) Do you know that I have an app that just helps me Google my name faster? (laughs) And again, well, how would that work? It's like the same way Ken Jennings won Jeopardy. He knew how to use the buzzer. I don't know if you how this is coming out so far. This is one of the best, most present. It's not the best. It wasn't until now where you fully started just talking to yourself. Hold on, Josh. I'm trying to talk to myself. Hold on, Josh. So anyway, the thing is, is that the, the thing is what I really mean. Yours are the sweetest something I've ever seen. I... You don't 
no service for you. What? You don't belong to a service. What, the music? Yeah, so how do you get your music? Um, I own a lot, and I listen to Amazon Music. You just said that. Yeah. Now, if I have Amazon <laughs> Plus, does that mean I get Amazon Music with it? Uh, no. God damn it. I'm already getting the plus. What could be more than plus? Plus, 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 plus. It's Prime, actually, is what you're talking about. Oh, I have Amazon Prime. Yes. So even the thing I had, the I pl- wasn't the correct. Pl- the plus thing isn't true. <laughs> Do you think this is a good line for uh, someone who's single? I'm single, and I'll tell you. No, this is. If I was single now, I'd have. I think I told you this one. I'd have Craigslist Premium. The idea is like. If you were single now, you'd have Craigslist Premium? Like I'd be paying for a special Craigslist. Craigslist? No, I know that's just. The thing is, I think the example of the uh, thing may have been too old. Yeah. <laughs> and now we're back. We're back. We've done the, we've done the first. Tinder? Is that what you're going for, maybe? Would that be the modern equivalent of what you no, meant? <laughs> no, the joke is that I would be doing so much trying to find women online, I'd, I'd have to have Craigslist premium. Because it's, it's like, but then I think the point would be no one who's looking for women online is using Craigslist. That's my point. That's well, where, I think that's you're right. I, that's where I'm coming from. <laughs> I think it's because it's correct. <laughs> I think the last time I looked through uh, the uh, personals, it was in the LA Weekly. Yeah. That still exists. But they still have hot lady looking for a... Well, she's not looking for anything, right? I don't know. Let's ask Jeeves. <laughs> Do you think in if you walked down Ventura Boulevard, is there any legitimate massage... Oh, I'm, I'm, and by the way, my joke's going over very well with I'm looking for a massage with a soprano-style ending. <laughs> Boom. Do you think there's any legitimate massages? Uh Yeah. Are so. they all legitimate? I think probably more in this neighborhood, it's, yeah. I would say, far more legitimate than non. So don't go in there like all uh, coming on to people. Right. <laughs> hey. I have third act problems. <laughs> what? I need an ending. <laughs> I, knew we were, I knew what you meant. <laughs> mm. I want to thank my wife for making this because this is the least annoying way that I've been able to take in sustenance yeah. during the show. This could be the... the, the uh, mm, isn't it a great thing? It's not, it's not as... <laughs> what's that? What, as bad as this? So then I... I call the guy and he goes... So how was your... <laughs> That's it? That's all I have? I have to have more stuff than that. Things that happen to me. I'm going... Oh, I'm going to Montreal tomorrow. All right. How you, and it's speech-wise... I thought you said, I heard you, I saw you send me things at 834 tonight, and I was very upset because I'm ready all day to receive your jokes, because I'm done with mine, I'm so far ahead of you, I'm even thinking about next year's jokes, <laughs> and I gotta wait till 834, um, I'm doing well with the jokes, and I, you know, we have one joke from last year that we didn't use. Oh, nice. Sweet. It's comedians without boundaries. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I, I don't have the exact joke for it though. I don't remember either, but I can go back. And comedians look. without boundaries. It's it was another. It was basically another joke at my expense. Right. I'm a comedians without boundaries. Comedians who constantly. What are you booking? Hmm. <laughs> See, that doesn't make things better. It does. You know what? You don't like it, but <laughs> the part that makes it sells it. <laughs> <laughs> It's the moose calls that really make it work for me. I uh, have a joke area to go to now. Okay. And uh, I have a fic- picture of the outside. And you know what? You have to be proud of me. You don't have to be proud of me because just being a normal person shouldn't get an award. <laughs> right. But have you noticed that I'm not on Twitter that much? And I could be, I could see in my mind all the mistakes I've made from previous years. Yeah. Um, I didn't notice because You're not obviously the absence of you makes me not notice more than your presence. That's right. Uh, but now that you say it, no, I haven't seen you much on there. Right. Good job. Good job, because I'll tell you why it's a good job. I understand why it's a good job, but please. <laughs> but I mean, beyond beyond the, I mean, I probably said this before, so I don't want to get blowhardy about it, but beyond the fact that it was a sickness I was getting involved with, I was blowing jokes not even like i'm worried everyone's going to see it but just the fact that you start investigating the premises of these jokes 
on Twitter takes away the power right. from I could go and I could not be and therefore I don't work on them as much or something. Right. So I I saw a picture of a uh, it's called Stand Up MRI. Beverly Hills is the name of the place. You probably know what it already means. Right, I do. But I already had jokes like in my mind it was a uh it was a it's a good room but it was a little clinical. <laughs> That's what Oh, clinical. <laughs> no, well, that wasn't. You did. Uh, I know, but it wasn't the kind of laugh. That that, it's not the kind of laugh you wanted, really. Honestly. Right. But, it's, <laughs> but then I said, maybe it could be one of these contest shows. You have to do, instead of make me laugh, a comedian will. Make me stay completely still for 40 minutes. That's exactly right. Yeah. And if you move, here's the thing. If you move, two things happen. Yeah. The comedian wins, which I'm not sure where that is. And you don't get your MRI. That's the sad part. (laughs) (laughs) And the mic rockets into the side of the machine because of the powerful electromagnet. (laughs) You have to admit, though, when you're getting down and the speech is five days away, that's not a bad premise. I have to say, when I saw stand-up MRI, the same, you know, better jokes went through my head. That's what I want. (laughs) That's what I want. (laughs) Did you you do them in your act? No. Well, then you need to start no, for I me. Will. Now that it's here, now that it's out there. And here's also the only way that I can convey to you what I'm working on without having to put it into a 40-page 40 40 document. Yes. Now, I'll talk to you about this later, but I'm coming back. Uh, another. I'm doing another event. I'm coming back on Monday now because I'm being paid to do something. Another thing in Montreal. Oh, so, so we're not doing a show Monday night then? You know, is, your, is this your fucked up way of telling me that? Well, I wouldn't say it's... Here's the reason why it's fucked up. It doesn't help the show. It doesn't help your mood. There'd have to be a funny reason why. So you're, getting, so you're staying on for another day? Yeah, and, then, and for money, though. So that's I don't good. Think, think it's, that's good. That's excellent. Mm-hmm. And I'm coming back Monday night, so that sucks. You know, folks, a lot of people get their homework. Is Tuesday good? Yeah, I'll write it down. Now. All right. Don't you think Tuesday is a good night in general anyway because I messed up? <laughs> I mean, because I didn't get make one? I don't know what I mean by that. It doesn't matter. How is uh, Clyde? Clyde is good. Clyde that is, is the greatest uh, new- Clyde thinks he's fine completely, and there's an argument that he is. Yeah. But we're still protecting him, at least from the big stairs. You can't reason with dogs, right? Not really, but you can boss them around. Uh, so the, so to them, all they know is, oh, God, look at this asshole again with the, kind you can't of. go here, you can't go here. Yeah. They have so. no, those, they all have no connection between the fact that, look, I'm upset about it, but probably he's keeping me stable because. No, I, I think there's a, there's a little bit of that. That's going what on. I'm There's looking. a little bit of, well, he must know what he's doing, I think. Mm-hmm. I think they have to know that because. I think over the, from the past few weeks, Clyde knows that I care about him greatly. Is that just because of the sex? Why would you make that about that? Why you would said you there that? was sex between Why you. Why would you do that? But you told no, me. No, that's not cool at all, man. Why? No, that's a boundary. It's a that's funny a, joke. That's a boundary that you shouldn't cross. Oh, but it's just bestiality. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. The worst. I'll tell you, that was an example of us no, yes and knowing each other, <laughs> but just it didn't feel comfortable. It didn't feel good. It was like the cancer bit you tried to do. <laughs> <laughs> what was my cancer bit? That was good. I'm getting a lot of... Okay, now it's good. I did see Ricky Gervais on the Comedians with Cars. Yeah, so did I. And I... There's this this person that Jerry Seinfeld is turning into, like the curmudgeon philosopher. Yeah. You know? I I watched a bunch from yesterday because I was looking for shit for this piece. Did you get some good stuff? Not really, no. Because, first of all, I was so mad that he was bleeping comedians on that show. They're ble- Why? Huh? Bleeping their language? Yes. I thought he did that. I thought he bleeped someone's name that he was, he was in a no, feud he with ble- someone. No, he bleeped every, fu- every... Well, actually, they were really sloppy about it. Okay. But they tried to bleep fucking shit. Because it's from... Because Acura is the sponsor? I don't even think it is anymore, because it's Netflix now. So, I, you know, I, I, it, it had to be his choice, honestly. There's no way in hell Netflix would have said you have to do this. And it doesn't so, and it incensed me. It incensed me that you'd have a show with, where you would with invite comics on to talk about comedy <laughs> and then bleep them. Well, why can't you turn just that? because he works fucking clean? Well, wait a second. 
Why? This is exactly the type of thing I would say every year on stage. I like it just as it is, just anger and boom. I know. I just didn't want to try to write it. I wanted to get it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that is just bizarre to me. It is totally bizarre. It, 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 and you're so, your ears kind of, like, it took me a minute to go, he's bleeping fucking comics, because you just, your ears used to hearing it anyway. But st still, it just made me really angry. And he just, he, you know, I don't know. The, the more I see him, the more I get annoyed by him. Yeah, because it's the... It's like, the, I was more annoyed by him probably than Gervais in that episode. Uh, well, first of all, I would also say that it wasn't... It was one of Gervais's better outings. Yeah. Because as long... Because the fact that he's not... That he's being somewhat passive and reacting makes it better than his normal. Well, and he got the upper hand on Jerry early with the Chinese thing that made the whole, the whole shows about that. Right. What did you think of that whole discussion? It was, it was, I mean, I think it was interesting to see comics having that discussion. Like I would have kept it too, mm -hmm. but I didn't necessarily agree with their takes. <laughs> on either, well, the thing about it, the more I thought about it was that the idea is that here's the thing that's funny about what they were talking about and why it wouldn't have had to have been an issue at all if in the moment they could say it's funny if you're making a point about someone and then you choose a group the Chinese oh of course they all look alike within that joke within that car within those two guys uh -huh. there's just nothing wrong with it at all really but unless you're really going to say Oh, you really say Chinese people do all look alike? It wasn't. It wasn't just. It was. Yeah, but the whole thing is, where are people exactly alike? There's no such thing as that. It was the point. Oh, I don't know, China. So it was, oh. I mean, it was racist. Oh, I thought they meant they look exactly no, alike. No, just they are alike. Oh, okay. Well, you know what? I'm not going to fight for that but, joke. No, you shouldn't fight for the joke. Um, it wasn't a strong joke. But the thing about Seinfeld is he. I mean, first of all, there was that that whole thing of. I don't know. I don't think it was on the Gervais thing, but on another episode, he was talking about, you know, how com you can, you know, comics will say anything. Nothing's sacred to comics. Someone can die, and three seconds later, it's funny. And it's like, but you're still fucking bleeping people. <laughs> like, I was that. I was that mad about it. Well, he has a very. But he also has this thing about comics, you know, that we're the super race, and uh, I know, and like we're a better form of human being, and. The, and but the thing is, is just like his view of comics is like from 1976 to 1999. You know, it's like it's not like it's, like comics of the 80s. The characterization of an 80s comic is completely different than the characterization of a 2019 comic. Yeah, it's like a different species, different field. Too. Like like 80s comics were not about showing vulnerability. Right. You know, every comic today is about showing vulnerability. And it, it wasn't about displaying your weaknesses. It was about trumpeting your strengths, you know? Right. And so it was a whole different wired creature, really. But he speaks as if all comics are one thing. Yeah. And I don't feel like he has any feel for what the modern comedy scene is so much. That's, that's probably 100% true. And then the other thing is that he has this, like when he had that argument with Ricky about, not an argument, but they were talking about how Ricky said, well, sometimes I laugh too much when people tell me jokes. And it was, why do they, why do people feel the need to come up and tell you jokes? You know, they're not at your level. Right. Now, I, I, and, he, and he was like, yeah, he's like, well, it's not like, you know, it's not like a, it's me telling a surgeon, let me take out that appendix. And he's like, yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, you know, in, in that way, like what Jerry, uh, here's what Jerry is saying. I'm so tired of people coming up to me. Right. I got a joke for you. The guy sees two people a year, I'm sure. I'm very sure he sees no civilians. He t I'm sure he takes a helicopter off the roof of his thing. Right. There was also like three or four, like, and I watched like five or six episodes <laughs> of this yesterday, and so I got extra sort of saturated, but it's like there's like three or four times where Seinfeld's like, yeah, this is, this is the life. That, that's why I say no to awards. Which is this inherently thing saying people are offering me awards all the time. I say no to them. <laughs> you know? Is 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 he saying that? Yes, 
Like he's a like bunch. He's, a he's bunch. been offered a Mark Twain Award? Yes. He doesn't want it. I... <laughs> But then don't make a big deal out of that. You don't want no, to. No, exactly. That's, I mean, that's it. my point. God, he is something. The thing is, he is so, he's so arrogant. I think it's arrogance, yeah, right? Completely yeah, completely arrogant. Completely arrogant, which isn't really that funny. But <laughs> Well, it can be. It but... can be funny. It was funny in Seinfeld more than it was funny in his stand-up. The shared. Yeah, but I mean, that's, yeah, I mean, that, that's only the sort of subtle undertone of his real stand-up. You know, his real stand-up really rarely, you know, goes beyond, he's an idiot. (laughs) In terms of, you know, it's pretty binary. Well, when he comes up with something... It's either completely dismissive. Right. But in a way, when he comes up with a classic, it's like, I don't even know if he knows... It doesn't matter that he knows, but when he goes like, you know, they give you a bill and they give you a... They give you like a... Uh, it's in a fold of the bill, you know, in the restaurant. They give it to you. Right. The, what is this? The story of the meal? Once there was a man who had chicken. See, I love all those kind of things. It's just that there's no, there is no there or there with him in terms of Jerry behind those. If there hadn't been Seinfeld, which I still think is one of the, well, you're not arguing against it, one of the greatest shows ever on TV, it's interesting to think what he would be remembered about. If he hadn't had that show, I don't think he'd be remembered as one of the great comedians. Yeah, I doubt it. I doubt that his style would have just sustained on its own through all that time if he was just a stand-up. Right. You know, and he's really good at what he does. Well, he's funny. There's no you question. Know, he writes. He writes good jokes. But uh, but is it interesting? No, it's really not interesting. No, and his actual see the thing about a show like that that bothers me is not that it bothers me. When it first came out, everybody, I liked watching anything with it was too, where it was a comic I knew and he's on there. So I would just watch it because it's interesting. Yeah, no, I've seen most or all of them, almost all of them. And they're, they're watchable from that level, but it would be, you don't learn anything really. You learn a little bit more than like Leno talks about with cars. Cause Len, like, you know, Leno like never talks he never wants to say what he likes about the cars. So you hear a little bit about cars. Are you watching Leno's Garage? Yes. <laughs> really? I watch it for the pictures. <laughs> no, I don't. I haven't. I haven't, but I saw him when he was on the Jeff Dunham A&E document. I'm sorry. I'm Jesus broken. Christ. <laughs> uh, when he was on the Jeff Dunham documentary, when he was... Uh, not, not, they were both come up, come up around the bend with the same car. That was the bit. Yeah. Oh, uh, what are the odds? Are you doing Seinfeld? <laughs> no, I think I'm doing Leno. Leno's in the Dunham thing. Hey, what are the odds that we both have the same car like this? It's, it's crazy. What's that? Why did my assistant tell me? Yeah, man. But there's a show in England, for example. Is it called Top Gear, maybe? Yeah. There is a show about cars or something where where people are, where they tell you interesting things about the car. Yeah. Seinfeld, he opens up and you think it's going to be an interesting information about the car. Yeah. And then he just doesn't even care enough about that to let that be sustained. I guess he's good at the driving the cars because he loves the cars. Because, right. you know, could you imagine me? Well, how that? much car do you want in comedians and cars getting coffee, though? I mean, you just kind of want to. That's all I have so far is that I, <laughs> I hear something interesting because there's two things going on. I hear cars. It's like if they started another show with this is the set. Look at this. There's a chair over here, and there's a table in between the two people. All right. If I had a show called Josh in his living room. You do. Right. <laughs> but if you were going to do a show to show people, Josh in his living room uh, drinking martinis. Okay. You would think that the, you would learn something about Josh's living room. Right. You'd go, look at that, Andy. I got a new thing. And that you would learn something about martinis. Well, I don't learn anything about... I want to hear something about coffee. Is this guy so full of himself that even the coffee is just another thing that's... Well, they clearly have the coffee Lavalia sponsor. Lavazza? Yeah, Lavazza. But all they do is they show... They show different ways of serving coffee at the beginning of the... I want them to go... It's called B-roll. What's that? It's called (laughs) B-roll. Yeah, but... It's not Oh, so you think that getting coffee shouldn't be part... I'm just saying... That's how I would do the show. I'm saying it's 20 minutes. I'd rather just see the comics talk. Getting coffee. Well, they just say comedians and, and, <laughs> comedians and cars talking. Forget the cars then. 
Why don't you just walk down the street like they two do schlubs? They spend a lot of the time doing that. The other problem is, the other subtext to that show Ooh. is you can't watch that show and think, oh, God, it must be kind of good to just do whatever the fuck you want every minute of the day and spend money and have nothing to do and nothing important to say. It, well, it's a total. It's like it's turned into even more of just like this rich guy parade now. Yeah. You know? He should. This should be great. You can tell that streets are cordoned off and you can tell, you know. Oh God! They should do it with um, James Cameron and his and and uh, he should take him one of his cars and then James Cameron should fly him around in one of those stupid planes, and just be like rich people really, <laughs> really getting. It. I'd like to see both of them get on the first commercial space. comedians and jets congratulating themselves. <laughs> I'm on top of the world, ma. Well, I think I've. I think I've. I think he. He's not coming off the uh, the carpet after that <laughs> no, one. He's down. For oh, the he's count. down for the count. Sorry, Jerry. <laughs> sorry, Jerry. N- next time. Sorry, you had to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> but I didn't get enough Gervais stuff. But Gervais, I have enough Gervais stuff. I think as it is, I have enough Gervais stuff. Yeah. But I still need some more something. I don't know. Well, keeps... I think we're good. Why don't I read what I have? Read what you have. And write your own stuff. And keep, well, it's Friday, right? Yeah, we got plenty of time. So keep, you know. Keep plugging. Keep plugging. We have five more days of writing. and. Uh, but I hope, I keep just hoping. Just if you think of something to write about, text that, me immediately. Okay, I will do that. But my question to you, sir, is I still, uh, we, we need one more comedy event that we'll, I can make fun of that could happen. So if anyone has. Uh, I wrote some more Bring the Funny Jokes. <laughs> I saw an episode of Bring the... <laughs> I did, too. Uh, did you see the one with Foxworthy? I mean, that way where he goes, uh, oh, what did he say last... I wrote it down, what he said. It was on last night. Yeah, 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 yeah. I watched that same one. And he's going, it's not called Bring the Robotics. <laughs> That's what Jeff Foxworthy said. My favorite, and I know you were already a fan of them going in, JK. The sketch group JK. Don't tell me these are friends of yours. <laughs> and they all have cancer. <laughs> What was that? What was that exactly, JK? It was a sketch. This is why neither one of us could do sketches. Because both of us would be going... I've done sketches, Andy. <laughs> That's right, you have done sketches. That's right. Okay so, there you, okay, so then let me change it. That's why I could never do ah, sketches. All right, now I'm with you. But I would think, you see, I think you have the same attitude that I have, but you're better able to I cover I never that. have the same attitude you have. I just never do. But you have that kind <laughs> Even of... Even if I think I do on the surface, if I dig a little bit, it is not coming from the same place. But you know, would you be one of those five people? Hey, red. Hey, green. Hey, yellow. It was a sketch about children's shows. It was, that, was, that was the point, was that they were making fun of inane children's shows. So why the the one guy have to take his shirt off and have a Andy, belly? Don't make me describe someone else's sketch from a show that sucked. I need it for my <laughs> my speech on Friday. No, no one's going to have that as a reference point. Didn't the people? They were all working Saturday night, Andy. <laughs> did Keenan Thompson look a little sad on that show? I think he looked a little sad. He was rightfully sad. I felt bad for the host too because he's just trying to host it along. But she was horrible because that- everything is welcome back to bring the fun. And we're back. <laughs> it yeah. Was, yeah, I wrote a, I wrote one joke in there that. Do you want to hear it or do you want? No, to I want to hear it. I want to hear. Oh, because yeah, it'll be on after. Because she actually had the audience chant, "Bring the funny!" <laughs> At the beginning, it's like, is this something we really want to train audiences to do? I would literally rather have an audience chanting, "Send him back, send him back." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and. That's how great. That's great. And also is very reminiscent about what they still do when I'm in clubs. They go, let's, let's care if you're a headliner. That's not going to do it. Right. That's also, there's nothing to Are you ready for your headliner? I said. <laughs> because they're resentful then. Yeah, I, I, I hate that. I hate that shit. I like when the crowd, when the, when the MC says, let's bring it down. It's an insult to the previous act. True. That act didn't get you to the place you need to be, so I'm going to go <laughs> come up here and make and cheerlead like a fucking warm-up guy. I also, when you're headlining in a situation, which is mostly what I headline in, is not, it's, it isn't the Andy Kindler show. 
the, I'm the headliner that week in many clubs, right? Yeah. And then they go, all right, he's the guy you were here to come see. I said, no, I don't think that they all did come to see No, but me. I think that's an okay illusion, though, to give the audience. Illusion. Honestly, honestly I feel like that's not a bad thing for the, for <laughs> the people to think that they're there for, you know, even if they aren't there to see you. Right, right. If they feel like the other people are there to see you, then it feels I like see. they came into something special. I love the way you build on the, you build really in many ways the art, the art, the, the structure of, okay. Wow. Of a sentence. Look, Josh, what if I am losing it, not just career-wise, also they find out that I have dementia? Would you be sad then? I would. Okay. I mean, you wouldn't remember me being sad. But the thing so is, what does that gain me? I put a happy me? face on it to you. <laughs> but what does it gain me? Gain me that you would be sad for me. It doesn't gain know. anything. I don't know. But I'm here for you, feeling sad. If that's How what much? You need. <laughs> what would you? It wouldn't make me happy. <laughs> what if 20 years from now, Susan has to go out of town and you <laughs> and you are stuck watching me for two weeks, a week? Yeah. Will you turn it down? Will you? It depends what watching you entails. <laughs> well, I'm talking about. Uh, I'm. I'm. If complaint. this is full on home care, then no, I'm not it your is man. Full on home care. <laughs> no, then I'm not your man. What do you mean? But supervising a home care worker, I'd come over and do. That is so terrible. That time, is the worst. Time to flip him. That's you know, the I'd worst. Do stuff like that. If you, I swear to God, if I ever hear you say "time to flip him," <laughs> then it's time to what? <laughs> Do you know how much I fantasize about me and you in the motion picture home? Like I don't know. How much do you? I do a lot. Because okay. I, I think, would we be the organizers? <laughs> would we be putting on the shows? Um, probably. Well, no. No. We'd be snarkily in the back. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say... Uh, also, let me remind you, I'm 15 years younger than I you. I know, that's the thing. <laughs> This is the thing you're going to have to start thinking You're wishing about. horrible things on me for, no, that, no, no. for that fantasy to no, come true. I'm wishing horrible things on you when I'm old. Okay. That's going to be a... Where are you going, honey? I told... I told... I'm going to visit him again. And uh, What do you think? It's I have to pretend like I lived there with him. <laughs> and every, hey, Rumi. How are you? How's it going today, Rumi? And remember, when he brings up doing the Sunshine Boys, make it like he... There's nothing funny about the dementia. And I want to tell you, the last person that's going to think it's funny is me if I get it. And I'll be making fun of other people who are making fun of me if I can remember it. It was so much better when it was just hardening of the arteries and it was called senility. Yeah. That was funny. Sure. <laughs> then you go, oh, Grandpa doesn't remember. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah, dementia is a is a sobering word. Why don't they do something about it? This is my uh, let's get out there, fellas. Now, happy moon landing to you, sir. Thank you to you too. And did you watch any more stuff? That I was kept like, watching. I just kept watching more shit. How do you know, know when you, when's a new thing? It's as so, I said the other day on Twitter, I've watched so much Apollo shit. It's as if I'm preparing for a long car trip with Tom Hanks. <laughs> I have to tell you something now. <laughs> that does remind me of. Uh, the thing that, that I, about the, uh, and you can't not watch it when they go on. They're doing the movies now is their new thing. Yeah. CNN. CNN's list of movies. List of movies. <laughs> hey, come on. All right. Don't, uh, yeah, that I almost did right down earlier. Well, why not? <laughs> list of movies. CNN, list of movies. And then, doesn't Tom uh, Hanks have anything literally better to do than to sit around and... and, and it's and, his production company. But what, is, what do I need to hear what he thinks about about these things? He's got gravitas out the ass, my friend. <laughs> is he a historian of some type? No. Yes. Bob Hanks is... First of all, that's not his name. Tom Hanks is not an historian. Yes, he is. Why? Because he, he talks to Ken Burns? Sure. <laughs> Because he's an actor. All actors are scholars. That's true. <laughs> you know how much work I do uh, when I get ready. He's to just do way better at being blowhardy than you. Is he funny when those little uh, interviews, or are they boring? I don't care. He's a delight every time he's on screen, my friend. Well, are you? I look. I happen to like Tom Hanks. Good. Um, if you, could, I haven't even in Punchline, which was a horrible movie. Yes. 
I didn't mind. No, I didn't mind him in Punchline. But I don't mind I didn't him. Feel, but, you know, I didn't feel like it was his fault. It couldn't have been his fault. Right. That's how, you no. know, that's what a good actor. That's, that's the most a good actor can do. Right. Is make you feel like it wasn't his fault that it sucked. Is that the most you it can, can do? Really? When it's a bad movie? When it's a bad script? Yes. Well, you know, when I, I told you this, when I used to play the Jew in Nazi propaganda films, yeah. because it, as, I, as you know, it was a slow period. I tried to give a wink to the camera that I'm not, I'm not buying this. I don't think I'm vermin. <laughs> <laughs> I saw more of these. I saw more of these uh, films, like all these films where they have the Jews as... Like swarms of rats. Yeah, and swarms of... Yeah. And uh, the one thing I want to say about it is... I got a new batch of Nazi movies. They're like Nazi. Like there was the one I was watching the other day was like about the SS and uh, how it started and uh, and Himmler. Do you do you know what Himmler looks like? Um, not. I can't picture him. Then you haven't watched as much Nazi stuff as we could watch because I until I saw that movie we were assigned to watch for our comedy. I didn't know that that's how Mengele looked. Either is that true that his voice in that, is, is his voice in that movie? Isn't it true that his voice was very similar to how Mengele actually sounded? They actually used original recordings, and Gregory Peck just lip synced. You insolent Jew! Do you know that that the guy, the guy with the crazy eyes is making cookies in the kitchen? What? Uh, Bobby, he's making cookies in the kitchen. <laughs> Bobby. Bobby. <laughs> Bring me some Toll House cookies, Bobby. Bobby. <laughs> I'm so. First of all, I I do think I'm a, a I'm a film buff now. You think? Well, we've watched four or five of them at least. And has anything happened in your week? Any updates in anything? First of all, I haven't asked you in a long time because you don't like these kind of questions. Oh. I weigh the least I've ever weighed, even at birth. I think. Wow. And I don't care about this. I do care about it. But I don't care about it, because I don't care about how much you weigh, but I weighed 156 pounds. Yeah. Do you think I'm lying? It sounds like a lie almost. No, you're a tiny little man. But you know what? The thing is odd, Josh, is that my penis weighs 25 pounds. Wow. So how is the, the rest of me weighs that much? <laughs> hey, that's skinny. Now that's a skinny guy. What else has happened to you since you saw me? It seems like you saw me recently. I saw you Tuesday. It's now Sunday. <laughs> anything exciting? Did you do anything? Did we meet at all? I've been working all week. I've been like, it, I've, you know, I've had sort of deadlines to meet all week. I had to do like those 40 stings and then I had to, I had to write like 40 things for Pandora. Then I had to record them all. Then I had to edit them all and output them all as individual MP3s. So that took a long fucking time. For me, and then I had to, you know, and then I was writing jokes, and I've been working on Michael DeBar movie stuff, trying to get that out the door, and so I felt like a, a job this week. And have you felt? Uh, does it feel good? Do you go, oh boy, this is fun. Not fun. No, it but you like feel being like busy. Fun. I mean, I pref- you know, I prefer, you know, I prefer like being focused on one thing that I'm into more than the like I have projects to jump around to. Right. But I've been pretty good at like writing a list each day and getting through it. So then it's no more fun. We can't talk about how fucked up I am. I don't know why I'm cursing more recently. Can you do me a favor? You should clean that up before you get on Seinfeld's show. I was going to ask you if you could be him out. <laughs> Maybe we should did, start uh, saying. I've, be, I've, sort of, I've become my, uh, my new weekend uh, ritual is to smoke salmon. Really? <laughs> yes. This sounds like the greatest and the saddest thing I've ever heard. So Why you, so sad? Well, because I... Okay, so you're buying fresh salmon? How do you do yes, it? Yes, you buy fresh salmon. Okay. You cure it. Over, what does that mean? Overnight. Um, you draw the liquid out of it with salt and sugar, in this case. Now, why would someone want something uncured, like the people like bacon? bacon? Isn't that ridiculous? Um, well, no, because the, the process that things go to when you cure them creates dangerous things, cancer and apparently. stuff cancerous is it worse than getting the thing like trichinosis uh no okay well, well yes if you if yeah i mean is cancer worse than trichinosis yes mm. yes 
So, uh, but it only causes cancer in laboratory rats. That's the thing that's so great about cancer. So, okay, so you take it, you uh, cure it. You cure it overnight, and then uh, when you take it out of the cure, you rinse it off to stop it from curing. And then you let it sit out for a couple hours to develop what's called the pellicle, which is a sort of proteinous membrane that forms, and that's what holds the smoke the, the most. Just in, indoors, out like in, when, when do you, you mean like on a counter? Yeah. Okay. You can do it in the fridge, but you don't need to because it's cured at this right. point. Um, and then you smoke it for, I smoked it for about two and a half hours. Did you put a filter on it? <laughs> <laughs> so what'd you have it on? What'd uh, you eat it on? Bagels, cream cheese. You don't, you had bagels yeah. over here? Yeah. Why didn't you tell me? Yeah. Next week, it's a weekly thing. No, then. no, it's a weekly thing. You have bagels. and If you weren't leaving in the morning, I'd send you home with some smoked salmon. Oh my God. And then where do you get the bagels from? From Noah's. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, is uh, th- most of these bagel places are not that good, but in, early in the morning, maybe. Is yeah, that they're, when they're you try good. and get them? They're good. Uh, I mean, they're not the best bagels in the world, but they're close. But well, we live in California. What are yeah, we going to yeah. do? I brought my own water from from New York. and uh, I still haven't made bagels in 35 years. <laughs> <laughs> but are you, are you happy with how it came out? Yeah, I'm getting good at it. At these, and, and is it called a coal? What's it called? A coal oven? What do you use? I use a, a pellet smoker. Pellet smoker. Okay. <laughs> I tried to talk to somebody who's a, who cuts my hair, who does a wonderful job. Yeah. And he so was talking. did talk- you go to someone else this time? Oh, I can't believe <laughs> that's the way the joke went. That's why it was a surprise. That's my new opera I'm working <laughs> that's on. That's good. You expect him to zig? Ooh, you burned me a letto. <laughs> Uh, okay, I think we're done on that. What were we talking about? Bam, uh, yeah, how do you know if we're done if you have no fucking idea what we were talking about? You know, that's... <laughs> I had a lot more salmon talk to go. <laughs> salmon. How about Shantix? Shantix. I love the way people say Shantix. Okay. I sh- thought I had more prepared stuff or something. Oh, well. Is it time to go to break? That's good enough. But I was I was late though though. That's why I feel it was five minutes late. I think we're even even into the penalty time. We're fine now. I would like to now listen to these are the jokes. These are the jokes, folks, and they're going to be in the speech, which has already heard. But I wanted uh, Josh to hear them. This is stuff you tried out the other night at which club? At uh, the Improv on Thursday. Okay, and it's all it's all SOTI stuff. You know, in this clip, yes, uh, it's all S O T I, and I I call it S O T I A because you got me into that. I asked you once, do you like state of the industry? What's it called when you do the uh, uh, initials? Like they, what's that called? Abbreviation. Yeah, but they're also called anagrams. Or, uh, no. Yeah, um, acronym. Imp- that's what it is. That's what I meant. Whew. It's me at the M. Imp- I think so. D is I like S O T I better than Socia. Okay, so let's do that then. Okay. So this is improv last week. Some two trying, nights ago. Trying oh, out, oh, yeah, a long time. Three ago. Three nights ago. A long time ago. Trying out jokes for the SOTI and go. Yes, that's exactly the music that people think of my comedy. They think of in cars. Boom, 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 boom. That is some crazy. That was Honey Buddy Holly and the Crickets. No charge for that one. No charge. A new thing. No, seriously. That's not noticeable at all. What is that, a cricket convention? What is that, a cricket on steroids? What is that, what is that four crickets with lavalier mites? Um, I was very upset about this movie yesterday that came out because I had a similar idea about a guy and this is uh, 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 like a storm or however that movie starts. I'm not good with premises or the jokes I'm doing or what I'm talking about. So there's, a, I think, a storm, electric storm, and then the guy comes up, he finds out, finds out that there's never been Jeff Dunham. So he starts doing Jeff Dunham's act to his friends, and then he's ostracized for being a horrible racist. Can you believe it? It's an alternate universe. 
Thank you. Because you're always there. Jeff Dunham is always worried. It's so special about him. He's always worried. Because by the way, it's politically incorrect. I can't. I can't what's wrong with Ahmed the dead terrorist? What's wrong? Come on, he's a terrorist. Ah, yeah. His name is Ahmed. Maybe that's what's, what's wrong. I don't see you doing Timmy, Timmy McVeigh, the dead terrorist. I don't see that on your hand, Jeff Dunham. That's right, folks. Jeff Dunham's getting it tonight. I'm doing a speech next week in Montreal, and I'm practicing in front of you people. Instead of doing what I usually do, my regular act of the improv, which also doesn't go over well. I have never had a good set in my life, and when I did, I didn't do it bad afterwards. All right, now look. I made that part up. I had nothing but good sets. Can you put, can you put in more cricket in my left monitor, please? More cricket in my left monitor. And also, if you could make me sound less Jewish. I, uh, hey, Roseanne is going on tour with Dice Clay. Because nobody will travel to them, is why. They have to leave. They invited people to New York, but they wouldn't go. That's another, speech, another joke for my big speech next week in Montreal. People ask me, Andy, how's that speech? Been good for your career? I'm still doing it, aren't I? That means no. It's not a launching pad. I've been doing it for 23 years. A speech in Montreal about what's wrong with comedy. And then I wonder why I don't get work. Now look, everyone. Are we back already? We're back. Wow, I didn't know that you recorded while we're listening to the... We go the extra mile here. I just let it roll. Once you're in the door, it's rolling. Well, I can think you could tell that it's going to kill the joke that I didn't do. I didn't do the whole part of that joke. Like, I didn't want to do the thing about uh, them doing a um, nursery rhyme thing. Doing the uh, filthy Zionist nursery rhymes at that the end of the kill. show. <laughs> that, I believe that that will kill. And uh, when I, I think say, you just, I think yeah, with the uh, yesterday thing, like I was saying, you got to do, uh, you got to set it up as a, a struggling, a struggling ventriloquist wakes up after whatever. <laughs> I didn't even realize because uh, I was re- remembering it. I, I didn't remember that part. But in the movie, he's a struggling uh, songwriter. Yeah. Songwriter. Yes. Oh God, that's so good. So that's going to work. And then you're right. I do need another joke. You need something other than the Timmy McVeigh because like a, it's a rhetorical point more than a joke at this point but I have I have your list of jokes and I'm just what I'll do is I'll write the anna- annotated things on your list yeah and send it to you so you can yeah which annotated me added on to I will be noted ah oh. well we did it so again you, so you can I, recognize your own list is what I'm saying I see, I got what you're saying okay. I just wanted to let you know we did it again jo- oh it's not over it's not over oh how come we never set up these Google documents? It will be over by the time this airs, however. Well, it's, oh, let me tell you something. With, even though I'm in the past now and I don't know how it's going to go. Let's just say, people, don't worry. He has another week from that set till the speech. <laughs> yeah, people, don't worry if that's, what you, <laughs> if that's what you were concerned about. I don't think they were that concerned. I'm not that concerned now about the time because... You did three jokes in three minutes there, so I think yeah. it should work out at that rate. There is absolutely <laughs> no reason why I can't get past the, I don't have enough time, I don't have enough time. Why don't I work on, if I was so worried about how much time I have, I'd be working on the jokes more, wouldn't I? Wouldn't I, Josh? I don't know. That's not how procrastination works, is it? <laughs> well, I don't know. Did I tell you that I was going to get the book about the procrastination, but they were out of sales, so I thought I would go back again and get it tomorrow? No, you said you were going to tell me next week. But then I decided to put it off. How many versions of those jokes are there? Uh, just one. No, I think there's no, other No, that things. was it. <laughs> I'm going to get the book about delaying gratification. I was going to get the book about delaying gratification next week. But I couldn't help myself, and I bought it today. <laughs> Any more you want to ring out of that? I just wanted to let you know that this is me improved. Can you imagine? Yeah. This is me as a better podcast host. Wow. Do you want to go to questions? You know what I want to do? A theme song? I wrote a song for it. Excellent. You ready? Can I cue it up? Sure. You ready? Okay. Yeah. Oh, he's tapping on his, big, on his sippy cup. Put it closer to the mic. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Every week at the end of the break, 
when they run out of material to do, they go to a segment that's called... What's it called? Oh. <laughs> Letters and messages from you. I'm Adam Sandler. Sorry about that. I don't mean just that. I mean everything... Up till now, yes, in your life, yes. I'm gonna, st- you know, what I'm gonna start doing in the podcast. I'm gonna start trying. You ever think of that? All right, then we might have to take the test show moniker off. <laughs> That's all I'm hoping for. <laughs> all right, um, Horace Zachary says, uh, if it hasn't been pointed out yet or isn't already conventional wisdom, do you suppose Dennis Miller deliberately lifted his shtick from Sammy Davis Jr.? Although he sounds even more like Billy Crystal impersonating Sammy Davis Jr. I never realized that. There's a little bit of that, man. Hey, babe. Hey, babe. Hey, man. Wasn't Sammy Davis funny, though? Da, 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 da. Sammy Davis was funny. No, I think I he was. You were doing I was doing around, that. But... In fact, if you don't know, I used to dislike. There was a point where I loved Sammy Davis. Yeah. And then there was a point where I didn't like him because of his politics. And now I realize who cares? I don't even know what his politics were during that time period. No, but he got behind Nixon. That's not good. But good. putting that aside, he was fantastic. Not the candy man, necessarily. I don't know anything about him, but I think he was great. <laughs> he was great. I mean, not, you know, he was also a caricature for, he was. for many years. But, yeah. But hey, and I say this sincerely, he was a talented cat. <laughs> the Are man you- could dance. Are you doing Sammy now? I'm doing a little bit of each. I'm doing a little Sammy and Denny. <laughs> That's where they come from. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, cha-cha. I can't see from out of there because I have a glass eye. But uh, what Sammy had, man, and I do mean this with, from my heart, was that. Was that showbiz sincerity that Dennis Miller never can touch. That's true. <laughs> Dennis Miller does not have a bone of sincerity in his body. No. A bone. <laughs> The most racist people now talk about how it's not in their bones. It goes through their blood system. Yes. It's a, it's no, a, it's yeah. a hematological racism. Exactly. That's it's, why they can yes. do it. It's not. Uh, um, oh, damn, damn it. it. <laughs> now you know how I feel. I do. Every minute of I every do. day for the rest of my life until I'm dead. <clears throat> you at least, boom, you've got something. All right. How would you like it if nine out of ten I times? I know what I couldn't think of. Exactly. <laughs> I would like to be me. I mean, not just in generally how horrible it is. Would you like to be me in terms of how much sexual energy I have? <laughs> Ow, Josh. It's not that bad that you have to slap me. And I mean this, man. You are one little frisky biscuit. <laughs> Mad City Architect says, Andy, Josh, what is the state of the industry? A preview, perhaps, for us spiralers? Shh, we won't tell. Well, we just got a preview, so. Thank God. And uh, it's going to be more like that, but also this year. Tighter. Read the jokes. Tighter, tighter. Read the jokes. Yeah. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Don't be afraid to read the jokes. Oh, you know what I did love during your thing was uh, you had a new line about the pillow guy that I loved. Uh, uh, the, the machine washable thing or the callback or the thing up top? I think it's the call. The call. What's the callback? Where my uh, my brain's on my my pillow, but it's machine worshipable. <laughs> I don't know, but the thing I was amazed at was how much. I think it was the start. You started it out in a way that was different or something. I'm confusing, but I was like, oh, I started. I opened with the my pillow guy, basically. Right, but you said something different, and I okay, loved it. Okay, we're good. You're good. We'll figure it out. A crack opportunity. Yes. Sure, I had a crack crack problem. I prefer to think of it as a crack opportunity. (laughs) That's what what it was. (laughs) Did he really have a crack problem? Yes, he did. That's why I felt comfortable saying it on my album. Wouldn't it be a problem? Isn't it a problem that he's not a better person after having taken crack? Well, Uh, I'm not on crack anymore. What do you want? I want you to be not like, I want. I'm addicted to good sleep. (laughs) Why is it that you nailed him? Just by the fact that he wears the a cro- like a cross, right? Why is that particularly? Because he's born again, kind of a thing. Oh yeah, I've it, got a higher mission than just pillows. It's bed covers too, <laughs> and sheets. I well, am going to wrap you in a warm cocoon of conservative delusion. <laughs> is that washable? It's machine washable. 
I have had more than one person, less than 50, come up to me and tell me that they like, including my sister, yeah. that she has the pillow and she likes it. You know, I've heard it's really been split by people anecdotally with people I've spoken to, because obviously people do want to talk right, my pillow right, with me. Right. A lot of people think it's shit, and then a lot of people love it. Wow. Well, but there doesn't seem to be any in between. This is, a, this is a funny joke I could do with anybody I meet. I say, I wanted to get one of those pillows, but I need two of them. So it was ridiculous. All I could afford was for the one pillow. <laughs> So, when, you know, if he ever comes out with a, sit with a system where you get a free pillow. I don't find that joke funny at all. Do you know why he doesn't find it find funny? Because uh, he got sued. That's right. But uh, I can't say it's if you call now because you can call any goddamn time and get the second pillow free. Can you imagine what the ones that haven't been sued are getting away with that he got away <laughs> with? I mean, how easily he could have. Because they sound fake, too. But I guess they're not the other ones. They're just operators are standing by. I, yeah, I don't know. I think there's there's probably still... There's still other stuff going on. I'm sure it, some of it has to be, like, if you're on that much doing that many ads, there's a better chance you're going to get <laughs> nabbed. Hi, I make uh, clay pigeons, and I pr say on my commercial that if you buy two clay pigeons, I get four more free, but I'm lying to people. How come nobody's coming after me? I need the publicity. <laughs> I'm Clay Pigeons. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> oh, God. Maybe you could teach an uh, impression class and I could take it. Maybe you could teach an impression class and I could take it. That's just mocking me. <laughs> That's just mocking, mocking me. <laughs> Dan Wade says, best of luck on the state of the industry. Just wanted to say how much I enjoyed Josh's polite but firm conversation with Andy a few weeks back about how he expected to get paid. Always a hard conversation to me to have for me to have with clients, so I appreciate the example. Well, thanks for reminding me. Andy actually paid me during the break. That he was wrote, he cool. wrote me a check during the break. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, th that's what we like to it do. It was a very yeah, it was a very direct conversation. I felt we didn't talk about price then, did we? Not on the air, no. They don't know that you got twelve thousand dollars to. Oh, thanks. Well, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it funny to me? I make a price that most people get for things, and then for me, it's a big joke. <laughs> right, yeah. I mean, I have actually gotten that to write for sure. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <You know? laughs> of course. The joke is I'm so cheap. <laughs> Seth Dick III says, any thoughts on Paul Krasner, who died today? I didn't know he died today. Yeah. That's sad. I, I met him a couple, a few times. I liked Paul Krasner a lot. He used to come around when the alternative comedy... Uh, movement started he was around and uh i thought he was great i mean I, I i've heard him talk about being stoned during the chicago seven trial and right. he's doing cool. acid with groucho and yeah he was a really kind of a, a great character you know yeah and, yeah and i like i liked what i liked about him was like what you were talking about is that he sort of stayed tuned in to culture and didn't just stop and go Remember what I did, <laughs> like so many of those guys kind of did. And he was uh, friends with Lenny Bruce too, like good friends with him. Yeah, he was a cool dude. Uh, how old was he? Um, I'm not sure. I think he was in his 80s, but I'm not sure. I think wow. early 80s. Well, rest in peace, uh, Paul. I love all the people who are connected to like the uh, acid test and all of those time periods. I yeah, like, yeah. And he also was the editor of. And he was funny, too. I like that. He was funny. Yeah. That's right. It's called The Realist was the name of his right. uh, famous paper that he had for years and years and years. My friend Hank Rosenfeld wrote for that paper. I know Hank Rosenfeld for some reason. Why do I know him? He's a he's, he's sort of comedy folk, okay. Minnesota, via lots of other places. Tyler Doodles says, Andy, could you revive your classic home movies character, Mr. Lindenson? And fire Josh. What? I love the podcast. It makes me feel stoned when I'm completely sober. <laughs> Paula. Paula. I cannot give you a raise, Josh. I cannot pay you more money. You're not getting any more money from me. 
Josh, why is every character I do the same guy? I don't know. I've, I've never seen the whole movies thing, so I have no idea if you're doing the character I am not. doing the character. <laughs> Linda, uh, Paula, Paula, I have to use the facilities. That's the best I can do. People say it was great. Okay. <laughs> it's come up. People have written in about it. I just never saw it. Well, you don't follow my oeuvre. I've seen every one of your oeuvres now. I saw your Lewis Lee movie. I saw both of your documentaries. How many cinematic Titanics have you watched? I've watched. Mr. Oh, Josh, <laughs> Josh I'm, I'm getting a pain in my didn't uh, do what I was. <laughs> All right. Oh, idiot. I was out a couple, I think. One. Huh? I was at one, I think. You did come to one, yes. Yeah. At Largo. I thought you did stand-up before or something like that. Because that's what I do. I don't go anywhere unless I do stand-up. Yes, first. you open for us. I think you opened. A, did you open a second night for us because someone couldn't come? I do believe that's the story of everything was, I've uh, done. I think I think Maria Bamford stood us up. She didn't do it on purpose. No, she was she actually or something. She doesn't like men. Understood. Uh, <laughs> you want, I like the way you want you, that on the record. Well, no, no, no. She does. No, Maria. I love Maria, and that didn't sound like a thing. <laughs> it sounded like me being an idiot. Well, <laughs> chalk it up. By the way, hello, Jen Kirkman. I should say hello Kirkman. because uh, because he never says. It. I, I go out of my way to say that you are the greatest on this, and 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 and, and, and never, never does uh, Josh bring it up first. I don't know. Forget that. Is that a letter from her now? No. Okay. I don't, feel, <laughs> I don't know why you I, said I Jen good. Kirkman. I, don't feel, I think I'm dying. I mean, I'm glad you did because hi, Jen Kirkman. But and Michelle Weiskover also okay a worthy hello recipient. <laughs> Uh, Greg Kelly says, uh, I thought I heard a discussion between Foster Brooks and James Mason about whether Pete Rose belongs in baseball's Hall of Fame. Maybe you shouldn't do it because he just thought you heard it. Yeah. No, I'm ready. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Foster, I think it's very clear that the man hit over 4,000 hits. He's the number one hitter in the game of baseball. How can you even have a Hall of Fame without the most prodigious hitter in the game? Well, the problem is he 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 he, 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 he wagered on 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 America's pastime. Well, I see your point. Now that I see that it is almost always. It's always delightful to hear you do those voices. <laughs> you didn't come around as I was doing it. At first, no, you were like, no, I, you were first, you were like, I'm not in this. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Absolutely. When I look at a, uh, when, when I get my scripts every week, I measure them. All. I have like a little measuring thing. Uh, how thick is it? And that's just for my penis. B -b 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 how yeah. many dick jokes will he do? How well, many then. dick jokes can he fit in? That's what she said. Ha, ha, ha. Uh -huh. On her wedding night. <laughs> Should I call you by your given name, Richard? <laughs> Derek Faraci says, it seems like whenever a comedian becomes a popular comedic actor, they start looking for dramatic roles to play. If the fiddling horse brings you to that next level, <laughs> what types of dramas will you go for? Period pieces, maybe play a drug addict. I I'd like to play. A I'm going to play a drug addict in the Renaissance. Is really let me hear. I let me hear. <laughs> I need smack. Where's my smack? That's all I got. I'd like to play a serious role, like in a movie where, like something has happened that the the world's been taken over by something. Yeah. And then so like the last scene. It's just me at the ocean. Blowing an alien. And I see. <laughs> For your life. <laughs> I thought you said that. I thought you said there was a, what's the bad news? <laughs> You're not out here for the hunting, are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you goddamn monkey. You goddamn monkey people. Oh, my God. I had the Statue of Liberty. Why couldn't it have been the Chrysler building? Damn you all to hell! I blew 50 monkeys! <laughs> Damn it! Uh, Stanford Blade says, uh, has anyone ever tried to subtly influence what you say about them in your JFL State of Comedy address prior to the event? That happened to me with the popular comic... <laughs> Up in, uh, what's his name? And he told me to do, oh, Jeremy, uh, something Peters, Russell Peters. Yeah. 
And he told me to do a joke about him at the roast the next day. And he'll be there. So I did the joke. Uh, Russell Peters is very popular in India. So is hunger and pestilence. <laughs> and then he didn't show. <laughs> so it just seemed like I was doing an unusually cruel joke. In Canada, in his Canada. home turf. <laughs> Music reviewer says, what's the one current show you'd like to pitch yourself for an appearance? Hmm. Mm. Now I'm actually thinking, well, what show would I be right for? <laughs> yeah, because usually when I enjoy shows, I don't think about who I'd be in them. Um, I'd like to do stand-up on uh, Colbert's show. Right now. Okay. Like now. Okay. I would like to have a better answer to this question. Oh, I like to do, uh, I'd love to do, every, I mean, every comic wants to do something serious. They all love to. You did, you did Fiddling Heart. Oh, no, no, oh, that was oh, supposed wait. to be funny, though. Oh. What <laughs> did you say, and how did you get there? Uh, no, I'd love to do like a drug, I, like Hat Full of Rain, drug act. Ma, what, what happened to my, where's the rest of me? That's what I want like that. No. Yeah. Is this want, the end of Rico? That I, thing. I don't want anything too showy. Well, that's like, just like me, too. <laughs> I want, to keep, I want to keep my light under a bushel. Mark Thompson says, are there any comedy albums that were a big influence on your stand-up comedy? Well, the two, I mean, I'm sure I've mentioned these before on the show, but the two that I listened to tons and tons and tons as a kid were Bill Cosby is a very funny fellow, right? And uh, Alan Sherman, my son, the folk singer, and my son, the nut. I and listen- I feel like I learned like so much... Just about how audiences laugh from those things, which is a weird thing. But like I remember with the Alan Sherman records, just really like picking out the different reasons they were laughing. Right. Yeah. See, but that's because you were an, you were analytic at a young age. I guess so. Um, I really didn't have that. Uh, I, I remember Jonathan Winter. I just never focused on comedy albums. Um. So I was older, so then Richard Pryor. Yeah, I was older for me too, and I, I didn't, except for those few. But uh, I don't. So I don't think any really directly influenced my stand-up. Although uh, when I did listen, go back and listen to Dennis Miller's Off White album from '88 or '89, I was like, yeah, that sounds a lot like my fucking act back then. <laughs> Just and, and the did, cadence of it, and and the way, and the topics, and the way you, I segued. But it was like everyone's act too. Was it did, was it good the black album or the off white album? Yeah, I mean it was like sort of peak Dennis Miller, you know. But it doesn't it doesn't travel that well. Yeah, well, you know, was, but for it, the time, it felt smart. And if he had developed into a nicer person, maybe we would have maybe back. with more compassion. Thank you. All right, let's get. <laughs> let's. I'm just glad I said a word. Uh, Seth Dick the Third says uh, I heard James Mason. Was a fan of Outback Steakhouse. That can't be right, can it? It he doesn't says? sound plausible. Well, you know, there's just some itches that nothing but a blooming onion can scratch. <laughs> but, you know, when I think of Australia, I think of extremely expensive steakhouses, and yet this bucks my expectations every time. <laughs> it's highly affordable, it's perfectly passable. I'd say I'm a fan. Who should you ask for when? Who should I ask for when I go there? Ask for Curly. <laughs> I wanted you to say Bobby, but it's a different impression. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I think James is James Mason a Nazi too? Yeah, I mean he's the one. He's from the head office. Yeah, he's from the people who's funding the Nazis. Mengele, Doctor <laughs> Joseph Mengele. Mangle is the name. Bobby. <laughs> Thrifty DJ says, do you think Andy could start up a side gig determining if things are spicy? I went to a Mexican restaurant with my mom last week, and we spent at least 20 minutes deciding if the chicken Diablo was going to be spicy or not. <laughs> we could have used your help. Pretty much anything with the word devil yeah. in it. Yeah, you can. Once the devil's involved, I think you're going to have to go spicy on that. If you Don't you ever go, don't you see the... Uh, the uh, the places that advertise uh, salsa, hot salsas, they always have a skull and crossbones and a. Right. You know it's going to be a bad. Dissol- partially dissolved human skull. Yeah, that's how you know right. it's good. 
That was your name in the uh, Naked Trucker, the aborted Naked Trucker cartoon. Your character was El Diablo. I do remember that. I'm El Diablo. I'm El Diablo. You're the devil. No, I'm El Diablo. And you know who I think of when I do that? Is Don, uh, my, I'm almost always going for Don Adams. I was pushing you towards Don Adams, yeah. too. Yeah. I remember that day. Yeah, it was fun. I'm El Diablo. <laughs> I don't know what happened to me with the hiccuping. It's the fucking gallon of gray liquid. You Oh, <laughs> is that what they call? Is that irony the, belches you're doing now? Is it the New York Times? Is they call it the I hear old, a slight ting with each one. Do they call... <laughs> we'll, be they, back, we'll be back in a minute. Do Andy. they call her the old gray liquid? Get it? Josh... I'm going to pick it up now for the last few letters. I'm sorry about what happened with the hiccups. Try and scare me. Um, are you doing the speech tomorrow? Oh, no. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> hiccups are terrible. Susan's pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> I have never, during a podcast or during any show, have do I remember getting the hiccups? Yeah. And it's... it's uh, it's not, it's not ruining the show. Yeah. <laughs> it's not helping. Hey, Andy. Yeah. You're suspected of starting a forest fire. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hey, Andy, I think you ran over three people today. Now I just start quietly crying. <laughs> uh, I, uh, what does work, though? Is uh, it like lying upside down? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you make me take my clothes off? Do you uh, want some water? Uh, does that help? I don't think it helps. Okay. Fuck I, you then. <laughs> oh, that's not. I almost took someone else's water. Uh, Greg Kelly says, if you played Major League Baseball, what number would you want to wear? The first thing that popped into my head was Rod Cruz, number 29. That's pretty cool. I don't know. That's a tough one. What was, what was Willie and Mays' number? 24? I don't know. I don't know. I always go for 16 because it's my birthday or 26. Yeah. It's my wife and I's lucky lucky number. Yeah. But I can't think of any famous. What? Uh, have you ever won any money with 26? Yes, we have, but you can't count on it. <laughs> <laughs> you can't just go on your on the day and then everything 26. You have to wait. Gotcha. <laughs> Yoshi Yamamoto. Oh, this is the first time this I'm going to This could be the cure. This could be the cure. This could be the hiccup cure. Yoshi Yamamoto. Yoshi Yamamoto. Yoshi Yamamoto. <laughs> I can't be the only one who noticed during the last Democratic debate when Michael Bennett said Trump just flew to the G20 and attacked our friends, Japan, Germany, and a third ally. <laughs> Did he say that? Apparently. Oh. Maybe he was the only one to know. That's notice. my bit. It is. And you both have the same chance of being president. Ooh. I didn't know Michael Bennett was that close to being president. Michelle Weiscarver says, no question tonight, gentlemen. Knock him dead in Montreal, Andy. And Josh, I hope Clyde is feeling better. He's good. He is feeling better. And thank thanks, you, Michelle. Thanks, as always, for everything, guys. Thank you for all your wicked positive energy. And yes, and I will take your good wishes to heart. Eric says, hey guys, I wanted to thank Andy for the great performances I was able to see in Minneapolis while he was here. Everyone I brought loved him. And it was wonderful meeting Eric and his friend, his friends. I don't know why I hiccup there, but <laughs> when you're doing it, you can't. You do the worst Foster Brooks. That's really lame. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I met up other spiral is there too <laughs> cool chris olson says hey saints and sinners just wondering what your go-to method for staving off the desiccation of summer rainy season is just ending here so now temps are approaching 40 degrees celsius and high humidity hot and humid and miserable osaka well <laughs> we've been lucky here <laughs> Well, we've been lucky. 
about the heat it hasn't been that bad. I, I think it could be getting bad this week, and I'm going to... August I'm, and September are the worst here in LA usually, so... And I think I've heard it's hot in Can in my, Montreal. Yeah, right now it's... I think there, it's going to break, though, before you get there. That's what I'm hoping. The things... Anything that it's gets the hot... the only break you'll get from this gig. Hey, come on. Come on now. <laughs> Kenny Loggins the third. Or KL3, as I like to call him. Do you? You like yeah. to shorten it up? I do a lot now, yeah. Hey, Josh and Andy, I started a new job, and a lady I work with looks like the female version of Andy. Aye. Should I see how well her Dennis Miller impression is? The whole thing, as soon as I... Uh, I feel bad for her in a way, unless I'm a hot woman. And I would not... How well do you know? Do you know her? If you know her well, I would ask her for her. I'm just freaking out that there's some, a woman. How much do you think? What are the chances that it's a hot woman? <laughs> First, <laughs> I guess is really what I'm saying. <laughs> that, that inspires someone to go, hey, she looks like Andy Kindler. <laughs> I, I want her. Oh, I finally was able to get the hiccup with the, In the line. voice. Yeah, this is good. I, my... My 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 wife is from but she's from buff. My wife's from buff. <laughs> my wife's from buff. <laughs> right outside Rochester. Wow. There was no pot smoked by you at the break. <laughs> I, I and had there. Not, would you have pinned this on the pot smoking? That yeah. that extended one. Yeah. yeah. That I would have. Uh, poutine, says Seth Dobson. Is it spicy? <laughs> it's not that it's spicy. It just seems horrible to me. I think it's the consistency. and I don't even want to make a joke about, about it. It just looks... I don't... Maybe if I had grown up with... Is it, it messy? That's, well, yes, sir. Oh, it is just regular poutine. <laughs> oh. But it seems very messy. Well, perhaps if you had some class, you could eat it uh, without a mess. I always think, Is it messy? I always think of Allison giving up her night, and she's upstairs, and she goes, if she hears something like this, she's like, oh, my God. Really? This, this for this? It hasn't made her curious enough to listen to the show, however. So. Does, she, do you, does she ever say... I have to, Josh, but you? Larry, quote, the cable, unquote, guy, <laughs> says, have either of you ever watched a Tyler Perry movie? If so, what did you think? Thanks for the show, guys. I listen every week. Uh, I don't know if I ever have watched a whole Tyler Perry movie. But... I never have, and the Medina, Medina ones, they Medea. just... Why not Medina? The lumpy... It's not called Lumpy Cold Medina? <laughs> am, am I doing a Weird alley thing? Uh, I don't understand. I don't understand any of his movies, and I especially don't understand the ones where he dresses up like his grandma. Yeah, I don't get it, get him. But you know what? To everybody, I know it's not my business. I also heard he's very anti-union too. So. Yeah. Well, he's got a giant studio. Of course, he is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't. I haven't. Uh, I haven't watched his stuff, but I do. You know, I, I have a lot of respect for people who build their own little worlds. Even if it's unless, Hitler? They, unless they're terrible to people <laughs> doing it, you know, but um, uh, you, you tip your hat to them in a way. Yeah. You tip your, your lady's hat. <laughs> I mean, I don't have any more real kind of, you know, aside from writing the SOTI, I don't have any real ire saved up for a uh, random, <laughs> random targets. Well, it just came out. <laughs> what did Medina's last, uh, this is the last Medina movie. Will you stop calling it that? <sighs> It's the last Medea movie. Yeah. So check it out before you get a chance. Check it out. Before the old ones dissolve. <laughs> Emma Ledsom. Hi, guys. I'm Hi, Em. I'm in San Francisco and went along to see some stand-up. Uh, I saw a lot of comedians die that night. Maybe it was lost in translation on me. Do you guys find comedy changes from state to state? Is there a funniest state? Well, San Francisco used used to and still does have a good reputation. I know I know they did a thing there called Cluster Fest. 
That's not what she went to. I don't know what she went to. But this cluster fest is like a lot of really great comics, but they're in a big auditorium. Yeah. So that doesn't sound good to me. Yeah. But I would think if you went to San Francisco, you could see a great night of comedy. But I don't know. I I really don't know this the scene there anymore. What do you think? <laughs> I don't know. But uh, I don't think is there a funniest state. I mean, most the best comics I have to say, just pound for pound, are concentrated in New York and L.A. But you know, there's funny. You know, Chicago is a funny town. Minneapolis is a funny town. Austin's a funny town. Yeah, Denver. Denver is funny. Yeah. We would never say that you have to be in New York or L.A. unless we were just in a bad mood and we wanted to say it. But well, it you, depends what you want to do, because at some point you do. At one point, at one point, I think if you want to do acting and things, you should probably come to L.A. Why do I feel like I died? I don't know. I think it's, it kind of seems like I think you died. it's the hiccups. Yeah, it, they are exhausting. I apologize. It's it's a lot of a lot of stress on your solar plexus. <laughs> San Francisco used to be, I think, a stronger comedy town, though. But there's still, I don't know. I love L.A. I like L.A. I feel like... I still like, I, you know, there's lots of shit I don't like about L.A. I'm going to the Broad Museum this week. Where is it? Downtown. Oh, what's the uh, uh, what's the uh, thing? Uh, I can't even remember, but we're going to go ahead. Is, is that new? It's our 20th anniversary this week. Yay! Happy anniversary to Joshua and Allison. Oh, that didn't help either. <laughs> Don't they say if you sing, you can't hiccup? If what, it, if it do, what if it really doesn't end this time? Then it's going to be a funny speech. How much material could, could I come up with about hiccuping? Uh, you'll talk about it on the spot quite a bit, I'm sure. But good material, I said. Oh, wow. Television Savalas says, I've never heard the Genesis story of the State of the Industry address. Was it all Andy's idea? Any other places besides Montreal it's happened? Break two legs out there. It happened because I did a speech in, I was going to the festival, I did a speech in 1995, like a demonstration of hack comedy from the hack handbook I wrote in National Lampoon. And then they suggested I do it the next year, and uh, they didn't tell me what to do it on, but... Uh, my manager came up with State of the Industry, and we just thought it would be good to have a general review of what's happening. So the genesis was that, and then the fact that it's gone on every single year since then is either one of the great stories in show business or something so sad you can't turn away. I don't know. I feel weird about aging now because I never used to care about it. But when it gets into like, if I've been doing the speech 60 years, then I'll start to think, you know, wrap it up. It's, you know, it's like. It is what it is. It's like your telethon. (laughs) At a certain point, the telethon didn't help Jerry Lewis. (laughs) 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 Callan Holder says, how much does Andy Kindler know about horchata? i.e. recipes, history, etymology, etc. Zero. There you go. Wait, let me think. Spell it for me. H-O-R-C-H-A-T-A. I want to say it's a drink. I believe it is a drink. And I want to say it has like a milky feel to it. I believe that's the same. That is, that's as much as I know as well. Uh, is it come from a, 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 a part of Mexico? It's a, it's a, it's a plant based milk beverage. Mm. It's plant milk. It's a popular Mexican drink that is often described as a sweet rice milk beverage. Yes. That's where I've seen it before. Is that the one that's cold though too? Uh, yes. Yes, indeed. Well, a great balance for spicy foods. Which is really good. Thai iced coffee is so sweetened. Thai iced coffee, yeah, is great for the, when. And I don't know if you ever ordered like in a Thai restaurant, and when the food comes, it's good. It tastes good. You like it, but you might be concerned sometimes. Not every time, <laughs> but sometimes you may say to yourself, "Is this a little bit spicy?" <laughs> 
Yowza! Yowza! What child I think would fill me up though? It's, it seems like it. Yeah. I've never had it. It's not. I don't. I still can't see myself ordering it. Really. Well, you want me to order it for you and have it sent? <laughs> nice little bow you put on that baby. <laughs> you think so? I don't know. I'm, they, they call me the man that never stops trying. Uh, I guess our last question here is Guy Incognito saying, uh, I'm not missing the cutoff again, God damn it! Now, really, who died and made Jim Belushi a big star? <laughs> it was John Belushi. Oh, you no, never knew that? No, it's funny. You, know, I'm serious, you thought it was Kathy Belushi? I mean, all these years, what did you think? Were you really in the dark about it? In the dark about it? So there you go. Well, I want to apologize for the last... Well, I shouldn't apologize for hiccuping. It's not like something I could have done in the car. You stopped now, though. Now that the show's over, it's like that. It's some sort of hysterical thing. <laughs> <laughs> At least something about me is hysterical. <laughs> I wish we could go out on that. <laughs> uh, hey, if you want to get a hold of us during the week, write us at thoughtspiralshow at gmail.com. Pick up my album, Chunks, or uh, listen to it streaming on any of your big streaming outlets. I will be at the Comedy Attic in Bloomington, Minnesota. Indiana. Why did you say Indiana? <laughs> 8th, 9th, and 10th. Tickets available at Ticketron. They're not. But August 8th, 9th, and 10th? Yeah. At the Comedy Attic. At the Comedy Attic in, in, in Bloomington, Indiana. Indiana. Okay, cool. There is a Bloomington, Minnesota. I knew that. I also knew that I know other facts about states that I'm keeping a little bit under the, uh, uh, what do they call it? A little close to the vest. Ah. Josh, I love you. You do have a map on your vest. It's weird. Isn't that odd? Uh, I check love out you, Josh. Oh, wait, I'm still, oh, doing, you got more I'm stuff still doing house cleaning. Here. Okay, I'm still doing I business. To, I wanted to tell you how much I love you, and I have a whole. Well, thing hold on to that thought. Okay, and I don't you can really. do your little overture at the end. Okay. Um, you can do your sonnet. <laughs> uh, check out our uh, shirts and mug at, <laughs> at <laughs> zazzle dot com slash thought underscore spiral. Uh, and I think that's our show for the week, Andy. I hope you have a very successful uh, speech. And by successful, I mean don't die before you do it yeah. uh, i don't think i'm gonna i don't think that will happen but we'll be in constant contact i imagine between now and then we will be and uh and uh and only once will you have to talk me down and i mean literally this time from jumping off of a thing i love you josh i love you uh alex <laughs> and all the people <laughs> he's gonna like that now i have to leave that in because it's gonna uh. make them all happy yeah, but should he be getting happiness from what I'm saying? Alex, end the show right now. <laughs>